What's up everybody, I'm Jaspreet Singh and ultimate financial freedom is when you can sit back, relax and let your dividends from your stocks pay for your lifestyle. Dividends are one of the closest things to true passive income because once you invest in a company that's paying a dividend, you don't gotta go and work at that company. Like if you go and invest in the McDonald's stock, you don't gotta go and flip burgers, but if McDonald's keeps paying the dividend, they'll keep sending you a check every three months because they're working hard to grow their profits. I'm gonna be going over a bunch of different dividend paying stocks and ETFs and different dividend strategies that you could potentially use but the first thing that you have to understand I know this is the boring part is why do companies pay dividends in order for a company to pay a dividend they first have to be profitable they have to pay off all their expenses and still have cash in the bank now when they have this cash in the bank they can do one of a few things they can save this cash for emergencies they can invest this cash back into their company so if you're investing into a guacamole company they can use this cash to go out and buy an avocado farm or they can use this cash to pay off their investors there's two different ways that they can pay off their investors. They can use this cash to buy back shares, which pushes stock prices higher, or they can use this cash to pay out dividends. Dividends are literally just cash checks that companies pay out because you own a company and it's your profit distribution. So they take the profits and then they just give it away to the shareholders, people like you who own their stock. If you wanna be really strategic about investing in dividends, and I say investing in dividends because you can also trade dividends, the way that you trade dividends is you buy a stock right before it issues its dividend and then you sell it after, but that's a lot riskier. We're not talking about trading here. If you wanna be strategic about how you invest in dividends, you have four general strategies that you can follow. You can invest in high yielding dividend stocks. You can invest in high dividend growth stocks. These are companies that are growing their dividends. Then you can invest in value companies that pay a dividend. And then you can invest in REITs, real estate investment trusts. I'm going to talk about all four of these, but let's start with number one, talking about high yielding dividend companies. There are so many articles on the internet that give you lists of the highest paying dividend companies. Let me give you a couple examples. You have SCU and ORC. SCU pays a 25 4% annual dividend yield at the time of recording this video and ORC is a 16% yield. This is Sculptor Capital Management and this is Orchid Island Capital. Now I picked these two randomly out of one of these high dividend paying lists, but let's just talk about what happens if you would invest in these companies and get these type of returns. If your goal right now is to make $2,000 a month from your dividends or $24,000 a year and you can get a 24% dividend, meaning a 24% return on the cash that you invest, that means you'd only have to invest $100,000 here to SCU or $150,000 here into ORC to get these types of returns. Now that's not a lot of money considering that typically you would need to invest at least half a million dollars to be able to comfortably make $2,000 a month in passive income. So to get that with just a hundred or $150,000, that's a pretty good deal. So what's the catch? Dividends only show you a piece of the puzzle. When you invest your money, you should not only look at the dividends, you have to look at the company in general and a dividend is a piece of what the company does. So if you're only looking at the dividends, you're only looking at a piece of the puzzle. When you invest in a company that has super high dividends like this that typically also comes with very high volatility. That means you can see the stock go up and down and in order for you to really see and maintain these types of returns, you wanna make sure that the company that you invest in isn't gonna suddenly tank tomorrow. And when you have these type of dividends, you're gonna see a lot of volatility up and down in the stock. And another thing that you wanna remember, which becomes extremely apparent when you invest in a company with super high dividends like this, is when the dividend is paid out, many times the company stock price will fall by the amount of dividend that's paying out. So if a company is trading for say $100 a share and they pay out a $3 dividend, the day that the dividend is paid out, many times you're gonna see that company share price fall to $97. This is a lot more apparent when you have these super high dividends because now when you pay this big dividend, the stock price falls. So if you get this 24% payout, sometimes you might just see the stock price fall by 24% because of the dividend that is paying out. So you need a strong company that can help drive up the stock price in addition to just paying the dividends. Plus dividends don't tell you what's going on at the company behind the scenes. So let me give you an example. Let's say you find a stock trading for $100 a share and it pays out a $3 annual dividend, which is a 3% annual yield. So you ignore it and you just kind of go past, you do your own thing. And then some time goes by, you forgot that you looked at this company before, but now the company isn't trading for $100 a share, it's trading for $25 a share, but it's still giving that $3 dividend because they haven't changed or updated the dividend policies yet. Now from a dividend perspective, this is gonna look a whole lot more attractive because now if you invest, you would be getting a 12% return on your money, which is a great dividend. But what you don't see when you just look at this is that the stock price has been cut into a fourth. 
So maybe there are some underlying issues. Maybe the company is on the verge of going bankrupt. Maybe the company is about to cut their dividend. Maybe the company is about to get rid of the dividend completely. So there's a lot more things that you have to look at besides just the dividend price or the dividend percentage. You need to understand what's going on with the company. If you don't like the idea of putting in all that work to research a company, then the next best thing is instead of investing in a high yielding company to invest in a high yielding ETF like VYM. Now I'm not trying to tell you what to invest in. I'm just giving you examples. VYM is a Vanguard high yielding dividend ETF. And the goal of this particular ETF is to invest in a whole bunch of different dividend paying companies. That way it can pay you a sustainable higher dividend yield. The advantage of investing your money in an ETF now is you don't have to try to find the perfect company because if one of the companies goes bankrupt in the ETF, the ETF will just kick it out and you'll have some other winners that'll balance it out. But that also is the downfall with investing in ETFs is you're not going to get the highest returns. Your returns are going to be averaged or normalized because you're going to have some winners and you're going to have some losers. So you're giving up some of the potential returns so you don't have to take on all the risks. At the time of recording, VYM is paying out a dividend yield of 2.8%, which is significantly less than the high dividend yielding companies that I talked about just a minute ago, which means that if you're trying to get $2,000 a month from your dividends, you would have to invest right around $850,000. Now, it's a lot more than what we were just talking about, but your money is going to be a lot safer here than investing your money into an individual company. Now, if you are interested in learning more about how to actually research individual companies and study the fundamentals of a company, we have a free one hour lesson that you can watch on how to start investing your money in the stock market in Market Insiders. Market Insiders is an investing education app that I created. If you want to watch this free one hour lesson, I'll put the link to how you can do that down in the description below. The second way that you can invest your money to get that dividend passive income is by looking for growth. Now, typically when we talk about growth, especially Especially when you talk about stocks, we're talking about investing your money in a stock that's trading for $100 a share today to hopefully go up to $200 a share sometime in the near future. But when we talk about dividend growth, it's a little bit different. When we talk about dividend growth investing, now we're talking about investing in a company that's paying out a dividend that's growing year after year after year. And you have a few different types of dividend growth companies. You have dividend challengers, sometimes they're referred to as dividend achievers. You have dividend champions, sometimes they're referred to as dividend aristocrats, and then you have dividend kings. All this means is a dividend challenger is a company that has consistently been paying and increasing their dividends over the last 10 years. A dividend champion is a company that has consistently been paying and increasing their dividends over the last 20 five years and a dividend king is a company that has been paying and increasing the dividends over the last 50 years consistently. A few examples of dividend challengers are JP Morgan Chase Bank, Apple, and Pfizer. Both JP Morgan Chase Bank and Pfizer pay around a 3% annual dividend at the time of recording and Apple is paying around a half a percent annual dividend. So again, this means that these companies have been paying dividends and increasing them steadily over the last 10 or so years. And if you want to get that same $2,000 a year in cash flow and you're getting about a 3% annual return, that means you'd have to invest $800,000 to get the $2,000 a month in dividend cash flow. With Apple, who's only paying a half a percent annual dividend, you'd have to invest significantly more. You'd have to invest 4.8 million, but that's because their dividend is only half a percent a year compared to the threes. A couple examples of dividend champions are IBM and J&J. &J. IBM at the time of this recording pays around a 5% annual dividend, and J&J &J, or Johnson & Johnson pays around a 2.5% annual dividend, which is around the JP Morgan and Pfizer dividend yield. Now, with the 5% annual dividend, you'd only have to invest $480,000 to get the same $2,000 in cash flow a month. And then we have the select few, the dividend kings. These are the companies that have been paying and growing their dividends steadily for the last 50 years or more. And a couple examples of that are Target and Coca-Cola. At the time of this recording, Coca-Cola is paying just under a 3% annual yield and Target is paying right around a 1.5% annual yield. If we do the math, at a 1.5% yield, you'd have to invest $1.6 million to get that $2,000 a month. And at the 3% annual yield, again, you have to invest about $800,000 to get that same yield. Now I want to clarify one thing. This is not investment advice. I'm not telling you to invest in these companies. These are just examples that I'm giving you going over the different types of dividend strategies. But you need to make sure you always do your own due diligence and do your own research because investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you got to always do your own due diligence and never blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube. The third way to generate this type of dividend cash flow is by investing your money for value. So up until now, we've been talking about investing your money solely for the dividends. 
But another way that you can invest your money is investing your money into value-based companies. A value-based company is a company that is profitable, that has good fundamentals, that's creating a good product, and that's innovating for the future. Now, you're investing in this company because you like the company, you believe in the company, but one of the benefits of investing in this company is you get paid a dividend as well. So you don't get necessarily the biggest dividends with these value companies, but you're investing in a strong underlying fundamental company. The reason why I'm talking about value companies instead of growth companies, not growth dividends, but actual growth companies, these are your smaller startup techie type companies. These smaller startup techie type companies usually are not profitable. They're spending every dollar that they can and sometimes more through the help of debt or investment dollars. That way they can grow bigger and faster to grab market share. So if they don't have a profit, they can't pay out a dividend as opposed to these value companies. These are typically your larger companies that have already established that market share. These are your brand names everybody knows. A lot of them are the dividend paying companies that we just talked about, like Starbucks, McDonald's, Pfizer, Coca-Cola. These are all dividend paying companies that are also value companies. But what you're investing for here is not necessarily the particular dividend, but the underlying value of the company. So if you don't want to do all the research or doing the fundamental analysis of a company, the next best thing is to invest in an ETF that gives you exposure to these type of companies and that would be something like VOO or SPY. Both of these are S&P 500 ETFs. I have some of my own money personally invested into VOO. They both give you exposure to the biggest 500 companies on the stock market. That's what the S&P 500 is. So when you invest in VOO or SPY, you're investing because you want to get exposure to the biggest 500 companies on the stock market. But one of the benefits that you get kind of as a side benefit is you also get a dividend. At the time of recording this video, you get approximately a 1.3% annual dividend for investing into these S&P 500 ETFs. That means if you wanted to go out and invest in these ETFs today and start generating $2,000 a month in passive income tomorrow, you'd have to invest something like $1.8 million in order to do that. But the other benefit that you get here is that over the last 10 years, we've seen VOO particularly, it's about the exact same for SPY, we've seen VOO grow by more than 14% a year on average over the last 10 years. Which means if 10 years ago you invested $10,000 into this, not only would you be getting a little dividend, but you're also seeing a 14% annual growth on your money. So you would have four times your principal over the last 10 years. So if you invested $10,000 10 years ago, that would be $40,000 today, and you'd also get some dividends along the way. And the fourth way that you can invest for this type of dividend income is by investing your money in REITs, which are real estate investment trusts. These are types of stocks in the stock market, and the reason why I give REITs their own category is because REITs follow some unique rules. So the way that these companies work is these are companies that go out, they build and they buy real estate and they make money through rent. So tenants live in these apartment complexes, they pay rent to the company, and then this company makes a profit. Well, these companies are required to follow the 90% rule, which says that they're required to distribute 90% of their taxable income, meaning their profit, over to shareholders through dividends. So these companies are required to pay out most of the profits in dividends, which is why many times you're gonna see REITs pay out higher dividends. So if you're looking for a way to invest in real estate, I personally am not a huge fan of REITs. I like investing in actual real estate. But for the people that love investing in stocks, they like REITs because it gives them exposure to real estate without having to actually invest in real estate. It's not for me, but let's talk about REITs for a second. A couple examples of this, again, I'm not telling you what to invest in, just a couple examples, is SPG, Silent Property Group. This is a very popular REIT. This is a company that invests in real estate, and at the time we were recording this video, they're paying around, around a 5% annual dividend. Now, the alternative to invest in individual companies would be to invest in an ETF. Again, this is another Vanguard ETF. VNQ is the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. This is an ETF that invests in a bunch of different REITs, and at the time of recording, VNQ is paying around a 2.2% annual dividend yield. So a couple ways that you can get dividends from the REIT sector are one, through investing in individual companies or by investing in ETFs that give you exposure to REITs. The last thing that I wanna mention about this, which is arguably the most important thing, is no matter what strategy you pick, if you wanna succeed with a dividend strategy, the key is not to just invest all of your money today, the key is to be a consistent investor. That means you create a system where every week, every two weeks, every month, you find whatever it is that you wanna invest in stocks, ETFs, and you're just gonna keep investing your money into these stocks and ETFs, that way you can build up your portfolio over time because most of us don't have a couple million dollars just laying around in a bank account to just go out and make a big purchase. So what you wanna do is you wanna create a system where every time you get paid, some of your money is automatically buying whatever it is that you wanna buy. 
Then, if you really want to grow your dividends even faster, you want to create a DRIP, Dividend Reinvestment Plan, where now as soon as you get paid the dividends, this money goes back into the company to buy you more shares of the company, that way you can get even more dividends. So if you don't need the cash flow right now, using this Dividend Reinvestment Plan allows you to keep buying up more shares of the company, which gives you a bigger piece of ownership, which ultimately pays you with bigger dividends. Now, if you're investing in a strong company where the value is going up and they're paying higher dividends, the value that you're getting just keeps compounding and compounding because now you're investing your money today, you're buying shares of a company that's going up and you're buying dividends that keep increasing and the dividends that you're getting are being reinvested to keep buying more shares of this company which will ultimately pay you with more dividends. So this is why it's so important to not just blindly throw your money into a company that pays out a dividend. You need to do the fundamental research that way you can invest your money into a company that will continually keep growing and innovating and produce bigger profits for you because that's how you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck instead of just trying to get the high dividend today because you see a big dividend yield that you want to capitalize on right now. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on ETFs that will make you wealthy that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you want to download our free stock market investing lesson on Market Insiders, all you got to do is click that button below. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. Now, if one of the companies in your ETF goes bankrupt, well, you're okay because your ETF will have hundreds of other companies to make up for that loss.